with the... <laughs> Let's start it again. I don't even know how to describe. I think you're getting ready to say legendary. <laughs> I was, but that doesn't, that's not enough, is it? Well, you know, it's really funny. When I started working for uh, Martin Redmayne many years ago, and he introduced me in his, um, you know, editorial. I was starting okay. the crew report for him. Uh, he called me the infamous Norma Treese, and I had to point out to him that maybe that wasn't such a good thing. I had to actually look it up. The meaning of infamous is possessing a reputation of the very worst kind. And I was like, Martin, <laughs> I don't think that's what you want to have. I think what you really meant was famous. And I never could get him to really change his, well, at least the word that he used. I don't know if that was his opinion or not. So, you've been in the industry for 30 years, and you've had, I think you've touched everybody's life in the industry in one way or another. If they don't know you, they don't, they don't know the, they're not in the industry. Well, you know, they have that, uh, you know, the, the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon in Hollywood. I've been told before that I'm like the seven degrees of the yachting industry. <laughs> and, you know, it's because I started out um, in the way that so many of us like to, and that's that I started out as a crew person. So I was a okay. yacht chef and a licensed mate for about 10 years. Uh, chartered all over the world on sailboats and motor yachts and, and really enjoyed that part of my career. And uh, then I decided that um, I wanted to become a real person and have a boyfriend. You know, the captain boyfriend thing didn't right. really work out for me. So I moved um, home to Fort Lauderdale where I had bought a house with my sister and uh, started my company, Crew Network. And um, I owned that for 12 years. This I ended up back in the 80s. This was in the 90s. Okay. So um, I had, um, uh, by the time I finished, I had seven offices in five different countries and had placed uh, literally thousands of people all over the world and started out the first um, internet database. And that's what enabled me to grow the business so back large. In the 90s. Yep. Exactly. So we were really ahead of our time. And I sold my business in the year 2000 to Fraser Yachts. Right, okay. And still to this day, Crew Network is a really important part of Fraser Yachts, of and I'm really proud of that. And that um, was you? That was me, yeah. Right, okay. And then what did you do? And um, I had already started my uh, journalism career at that point. I had been writing for Doc Walk, and I always remember um, when uh, that was launched because my wedding picture was in the very first issue of Doc Walk. Right. And my husband <laughs> and I are going to celebrate our 21st wedding anniversary this year. Oh, so, the, so the guy that you got off the boat you're still with today? Well, I didn't get off the boat for him, but I was lucky enough to meet him just a couple of years later. So oh, okay. that was a really great thing. My husband's a musician, so he's not in the yachting business at all. Has uh, anybody ever actually met your husband? Oh, yeah, a lot of people know Detlef. Um, he's actually a, a very well known singer, and um, he um, sang for us at the International Super Yacht Society at our awards gala at the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show Which last we, year. Now, as we're on camera, we tried to get in to come and interview people at, on the red carpet as they were coming in. Yes. And we were kind of shuttered at the last minute. Well, you just have to talk to the right people, Lee. You know, the... <laughs> the you're it, not part of the IS anymore. Yes, right? I am. No, I'm on, uh, on the on board of directors, and I'm what they call the ambassador of ISS. Um, okay. I'm one of the earliest members. I've been a part of it for um, 27 years. And um, one of the things I do is organize their events all over the world. So we had a fantastic party on board uh, Usher, where we are here today. Yep. This is um, our home for ISS members throughout the Miami show. And we had a party for about 160 people last night that was great. And we, it had uh, all the facets of the yachting industry. So we had, um, of course, uh, captain and crew. We had brokers. We had yacht builders. We had suppliers. We had a good smattering of owners. We had journalists and everybody had a great time so I always credit uh, ISS with being um, one of the most important parts of, of the growth of my business career. Um, I joined ISS right when I um, founded Crew Network and it gave me the opportunity to meet the leaders of the industry one-to-one um, -one. so that if I need to know anything about a business or do some business with somebody I can go straight to the top people. So that's always been one of my mantras in business, and that's go straight to the top. So if anybody's looking for a tip about how to succeed in the yacht business, make sure that you know as many important people and that you can shake their hands and get them on the telephone. And ISS personally has been one of the most successful parts of it. But so anyway, after Doc Walk, I worked with them for several years, and we sold that to BI. Then I went to go work for... So that was before BI owned it? Yes. Yeah, I was with so the founder, Greg Mullen. So Dot Walk started as what? Just uh, we started as a newspaper. Just handing it out on the docks to. Yes, crew. we did the the uh, the first couple of issues. We uh, we only put out something like five hundred copies of it. Um, by the what, time. A month or a quarter. Per or? month, 
Lauderdale. Yeah, okay. we started per month, uh, I, I think in I... In Fort Lauderdale. In Fort Lauderdale. And um, I was international editor for them. So as I was traveling around, I would write stories about all different kinds of events. My specialty as a journalist has always been um, the great people and the events of yachting. So I cover, you know, uh, VIPs wherever they go. I cover regattas. I cover boat shows. I cover educational conferences. It's kind so, of the case if you're not there, it's not worth going to. Well, I wouldn't say that. I hope I don't think that's true either, because the reality is the industry has grown so much that there are. It's too much to do. There's too much to do. You can't do it all. When I first started, you could go to just about every major event. But now in today's world, everything has expanded. As the industry has grown, um, as my career has grown, as the amount of people that work on yachts, the amount of people that have worked in the business, the events and the variety of what we can do in the yachting industry has absolutely exploded. So, you know, have you have you to pick and that? choose. Through three decades worth of this show, Lauderdale, Monaco, uh, Monaco, Metz, wow. Singapore, you so know, St. Bart's Bucket, so the Antigua female, Charter Show. You're not part of the old, you're not the old boy, but you are. You're part of the old boy network. Well, I, I guess I could say I'm part of the old guard. I, I don't like that word old. old. I like, yes. you know, you know, to say experienced <laughs> or something of that type. But, you know, anybody that knows me and, and, and tracks the, the longevity of my different careers can kind of start to add the numbers up, which gets a little bit scary. Um, but, yeah, I've been a, a really... Uh, kind of at the center of you know the growth of yachting and and it's been an incredible pleasure this this industry does this is why everyone well beyond likes you respects you because you have been the cornerstone then i guess of the development of the, the global industry i've been a very small part of of what's been involved with um you say so that but <laughs> dot walk's not a small thing and no, 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 but you know, I was there at the beginning of that and I helped it grow and it was great and I loved my years working uh, with Martin in the Yacht Report group, so that was wonderful. So hang on, so you worked with Martin as well? Yeah, for four years I founded uh, Crew Report for him. Wasn't there a conflict of interest? Well, no, because we'd already sold Doc Walk. So when we sold Doc Walk, Martin You're came to me. Leave and then... Martin, Martin came to me. I didn't even have gardening leave. Um, Martin, I'd actually worked at the same time for Boat International. When I was with Doc Walk, I was with Boat International in a magazine that has disappeared that's called Captain's Log. And I loved Captain's Log. That was absolutely beautiful. Uh, Natalie Vizard was the editor with that. And uh, Natalie Vizard actually came and joined us at the crew report um, with the Yacht Report group. She's retired and, and is a mother um, living outside of London now. But she was a, one of the many great editors I've worked with. And of course, um, as part of my business career, I've maintained my journalism presence. And um, I work with uh, Suki at YachtingToday.tv, so I do a lot of on-camera work, which is great. I get to interview people and, and talk to them about what they do in the business, which is it's quite always funny. All wonderful. All you have to do is just get a go and you go. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, who you, Zach was interviewing a guy um, on the dock earlier, and it was... It's getting it out of him. But. I don't normally have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> my mother said when I was born, uh, my dad was a diplomat, and I was born in, in uh, the second set of children that my parents had in uh, Asuncion, Paraguay. I was their second honeymoon. From they, were, they went to Brazil on their honeymoon, and I came along nine months later. And my mother said that uh, 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 she popped me out. It was the easiest birth she had. And I said, hey, Mom, how you doing? And kept on going. So... <laughs> I guess I've always been like that. Yeah, <laughs> she, your energy is, well, beyond infectious, it's never ending. I don't think I've ever seen you tired. Well, you know, my husband sees those times. I love my sleep as so you well. Leave it, I mean, okay, so one of the tips you want to do is like top 10 boat show tips. Okay. How do you, how do you, how does Norma Therese prepare for a boat show? Well, it really helps me. A lot of people ask that question, you know, how I've been able to maintain my interest and energy in the yachting industry for mm. so long. Uh, one of the things is because I've been able to enjoy such an incredible diversity in my own personal career. Um, you know, my consulting career has been utterly fantastic. I've helped so many businesses grow. Um, my first consultancy client was FedShip. I used to run their crew education programs for them, um, which was, you know, <laughs> really, really great time. And I learned a lot um, doing that. I had uh, worked on several Fed ships in the past and, and built a couple of boats. Um, then I went on and I worked with the first call. Um, a really big client was uh, only yacht out of Monaco. I worked directly with the founder, uh, the great Jean-Victor Pasteur. And of course, that company has now become only yacht, only marina, and right. is fantastic. And I still have a great relationship with them. Um, I spent, of course, many people know, uh, five years with Salamanca Group building yeah. uh, One Ocean Port Vale in Barcelona. 
Uh, we, How was that? That was an amazing, amazing project. I love working with them. You cash, right? To well, you know, it's um, you know, the difference between my specialty has become uh, taking companies outside of yachting that want to come into yachting, and um, certainly working for a private bank out of London, an investment capital firm um, that has the experience of building large infrastructure projects. They understood um, from a business point of view and from an operational point of view what it takes to actually build something of that magnitude. So they weren't yachties. They hired me to be the in-house yachty to help direct that project. And were they so, looking to make money on that project? Or? Um, they were, of course they were looking to make money on that project. It's, a, a, it's an investment firm. And in fact, we did make money. I spent five years with them, started everything from the um, initial planning of the marina, uh, working through developing uh, with the great team out of London, of course. Amazing so, people. What, so Marketing, sales into operations and uh, we had the great good fortune to um, sell the marina to some um, previous clients uh, just before the Monaco show last year so it was a really good happy circle and I still work with them on um, looking at future projects so I certainly hope that we can find another worthy project for Salamanca Group to do the same kind of magic someplace else in the world that we did in Barcelona. You managed to get somebody who wasn't in yachting to invest in a yachting enterprise. Well, they had actually, they had just purchased it. They, they got wind of this fantastic project in Barcelona. And then when they acquired the project, all of a sudden oh, they so it said... it was already moving. Well, they had, yeah, yes, it had been in place for quite some time. And they purchased a concession in Barcelona with the eye of redeveloping it and soon realized that they didn't know anything about the yachting industry. So they came looking for somebody that knew the yachting industry, and I was recommended by um, Jim Evans from Super Yachts Monaco and met one of the principals and started virtually immediately and spent um, five really fantastic, productive years with them. And you lived in... Barcelona, right? Um, I spent, uh, I had a, an apartment in Barcelona. Um, I've been home based uh, both in Fort Lauderdale and in Antibes for a long time, in Fort Lauderdale for almost 30 so you, years. Where do you live now? Uh, Fort Lauderdale is um, uh, our main home, supposedly. Um, I've lived in Antibes for 17 years. I have a beautiful apartment there that's owned by a captain and his wife. And uh, my husband has a place in his hometown in um, the Black Forest region of Germany. So at, when I was doing the project in Barcelona, we had four houses in four different countries for two people. So now we're back down to three, which is a little bit more manageable. <laughs> this is why you have so much energy, because you've got so much going on then. You're constantly moving, you're constantly... Pretty much. Well, as I said, you know, what, what keeps me going is the fact that I've been able to enjoy such um, an incredibly interesting and diverse career in the yeah. yachting industry, and I've been able to do so much good. Um, this industry does so much for so many people. You know, we create beauty, we create technology, we create jobs, we create opportunities, and we bring new money into the world. What we create in the yachting business are things that did not exist before. And we allow people with the means to own one of the most expensive luxury items in the world to be able to live their dreams. And we are all able to benefit from that. So the yachting industry is something that I take my position in it very seriously as something that needs to be protected and taken care of because mm -hmm. there's hundreds of thousands of people, there's billions of dollars all over the world that depend on what we do. We can't do it without the yacht owners that make it all possible. You know, they're at the top of the feeding chain. So all of us are, are cogs in that machinery, but it's something that, that I really take seriously. And of course, more recently, I've been involved in um, a lot of humanitarian work. Um, I work with, the, we founded the Super Yacht Aid Coalition uh, last year, just before the Monaco show. That together with um, MIBA, um, BWA, A Crew, um, AYSS, um, we have about 80 businesses that have joined now. We've raised hundreds of thousands of euros. We've sent over 300,000 tons of material down to the Caribbean. Over 60 yachts have participated in it, a, a large number of commercial ships and airplanes. And um, we're looking to carry that mission forward to help the people that live in the coastal areas um, that we are able to enjoy and participate in that maybe don't have the good fortune that we do that work within the industry. So um, 
establishing the Super Yacht Aid Coalition, working together with our operational partners, Yacht Aid Global, has been yet another thing that I'm really proud of and that I think is so important. Um, we know that in business you call it uh, corporate social responsibility. Um, I call what we do yachting social responsibility. And the response that we've had from everybody across the industry, from uh, captain and crew to business owners to um, yacht owners, um, to builders, to fellow philanthropists has been just amazing. Um, the yachting industry, I think, was thirsty for um, an opportunity to do good within the own prism of where we work. Yeah, they're looking to do, to offset some of this guilt. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't like to call it guilt. I, th I think it's the opportunity to share our good fortune. That's and a better way of putting it, yes. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a well rehearsed line. And it's true. And, you know, we have a great deal of power within the yachting industry. And I think in, in many ways because there's a lot of competition. You know, you get into some factions of the business. You know, you look at brokerages and insurance houses and the competition in those is fierce. Mm -hmm. Really, really strong. And, um, you know... So sometimes we let the competitive nature of what we do for business, even within magazines, of course, even online, yeah. you know, even within associations, we have competition. So if we can concentrate on something that brings everybody together, that people can all buy into, I think it's something that, that as I said, people have not invested just their time and their money, but their hearts and souls in, and I'm really, really proud of that. You know, I unfortunately, know, you Lee, I, I don't have you. much more time. Um, <laughs> But I want to tell you, I really like what you do here with uh, Between Two Yetis. Yeah, we do it for fun, really. It's just great to hear people's stories. It absolutely is, you know, and I love your story. You know, I mean, you know, when I met you, you were a totally different person. Yes. You were working yes. in Palma in a completely different business. And <laughs> I think what you're doing here is creative and fun. And you yourself are a great example of, of the growth that people can have in the industry. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. Well, everyone knows how to get in touch with Norma. So. Well, you can uh, reach me at normatrice.ts.com if you want. My name is called uh, Yacht Knowledge. If you ever want to know anything, call Norma. Thank you, Lee. <laughs> thank you. Come on. Come on. Love you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Martin uh, Redmayne has ever had. Are we actually using this or can we start again? <laughs> can we start again? <laughs> it's all very cousin. <laughs>